I didn't want to lose any more of my friends. And um, I didn't want anybody else from Chicago to you know, feel the pain that I felt. All of my friends are from the game of basketball. And, you know, oftentimes in Chicago, when you don't play basketball for as long, you pick up other things that aren't so positive, right? And I lost a lot of guys to, to gun violence just from being available, just not having, you know, the ball in their hand anymore. So uh, my goal of this foundation was, you know, at first initially it was really about my friends. From Thursday to Sunday, 6 to 10 p.m. or 5 to 9 p.m., depending on what the week was, we just provided a safe haven for everybody to come and play basketball, to get a free meal, to listen to some good tunes and just some things like that. I know like what an idle mind can do because I, I know what it did to myself. Um, that was our perfect time to just tap into something else. We got an office space and we just did a bunch of like yoga classes, like one off yoga classes. You know, we did some art therapy classes, you know, we did some panels and things like that. But at this point right now, and we're actually like building like a whole curriculum out, like a mental health curriculum in like an, an unconventional fashion. A lot of the reason why people in you know neighborhoods like the one I grew up in um, don't really participate in it just because they weren't exposed to it, right? So it's just our job right now to expose them to something different. I started this foundation for you know I had a lot of different reasons that you know, played a part in it, but you know I obviously wanted just to give you know the, the kids in Chicago an opportunity to see something they never saw before, right? Um, heal in ways that they they've never been able to, and I just don't feel like I feel like we, they just don't have those resources. an advocate for mental health. His last album was actually called PTSD. He's kind of been a voice, you know, through music uh, of what the guys in Chicago go through. So we've partnered with him. I'll call them under-resourced communities, underserved communities, but um, it's a lot, of, a lot of promise, a lot of talent in those areas. And I just want to, you know, be a, a, around a, a group of guys that want to help um, bring that out of them. call it global climate change, and it is, but it affects each of us, no matter where we live, in your city, your town, or your farm, climate change is having its effect. The more people we are on the planet, the less resources there are for each of us. In my lifetime, we've eradicated two-thirds of wildlife on planet Earth, almost like a mind-boggling scale of loss of life. The Colorado River is drying up. We use and discard so much plastic into the world that it finds its way into our food chain. Joshua Tree National Park. In the next century, all of this could disappear. Sounds grim? Well, it kind of is. I want to build a compost site and help that community stand on their feet. That's what compost power is about. It's about just giving the power to the people. I think, really, we are in the situation that Noah was in. And the question now is, what can we say? How else can I give back? How else can I make my energy matter? We as tribal people, we're very dedicated to our homeland. If we can live in harmony with nature, then we are able to harness nature for these paradigm-shifting solutions. We need to preserve our soil. I mean, the good news is we can build it. Only what you love would you protect, and only what you learn about can you come to love. 